<laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Forecast with Grimberg and Biggs. He is Grimberg, I am Biggs. Today we are talking about quarterback lead mine. Do you know who works in a lead mine, Mike? My girlfriend works in a lead mine. Oh, shit. It says landmines. Quarterback landmines. Oh. Welcome to the Fantasy Forecast. Producer! Yeah, so uh, my girlfriend works in a in a lead mine, lead and zinc. She's she's a miner, um, and also we're grandparents. Uh, and that doesn't sound of, very legal. It, your girl, your girlfriend's a miner. You could get right. arrested for some. <laughs> she's also a, we're also grandparents, so not a lot of people can say they they uh, sleep with a miner and a grandma at the same time. That's my stand-up <laughs> closer. <laughs> Welcome to Fantasy Forecast with Grimberg and Biggs. He is Grimberg, I am Biggs. Today we are talking about quarterback landmines. Uh, last week, uh, last the last three episodes, we talked about gold mines in redraft fantasy football. That is redraft leagues, your home leagues, your, your family leagues, your workplace leagues. Murder your family in uh, fantasy football. Kill all your co-workers in fantasy football on CBSSports.com, NFL.com, ESPN.com, Yahoo.com, etc. I'm very sick, if you couldn't tell. I've been drinking hot toddies and sleeping and taking Sudafed all day long. Um, so I apologize if I'm a little bit frisky today. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So uh, my my top three landmines um, will go with my number three. It's a quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray. He's quarterback 10 currently in ADP. That's pretty high for Kyler. Um, one thing that we've been waiting on for a lot of years with Lamar Jackson is a really bad injury to kind of derail his career. The smaller backs, the backs that run a lot, we can see career arcs, and they tend to fall off. And uh, and and Kyler's, I mean, he's he's been around for a few years. He's not a pocket passer who's going to last well into his 30s. Um, he has dealt with injuries in his career and we can't predict injuries. We can't say somebody's injury prone, but, um, the, the likelihood of Kyler Murray finishing a full season is not something that I'm willing to spend the 10th pick in the draft on. Uh, number two is Jared Goff. He's being drafted at quarterback 12. Um, I mean, if we're talking redraft, Whoa. that's that's a little bit too high for me. I love Jared Goff. Hashtag yeah. Novato Boys. Uh, we share we share a hometown, and uh, and and I had a low heen. But um, I'm I'm a, a quarterback fade guy in redraft, and so I will I will let other people spend the capital to get the quarterback ten, the quarterback twelve, and I will find the guys in the in the bottom. Um, my my number one quarterback landmine is hey, hey. going to be revealed after we hear from Grindberg. Jeez, ahead, that, never, does, that never gets old, Biggs, I swear. Am I just that gullible? It's a, no, it, no, it's a great bit. Okay, yeah, I think it's gold. It was it was gold last week. It might be a landmine this week. Uh, Next week no, it okay. might be. Okay, we'll talk about Well, my first landmine at the quarterback position is Justin Fields, and drafting him in 2024 might seem tempting given his past fantasy performances, but his uncertain role as a backup behind Russell Wilson and the Steelers' offensive dynamics raise red flags, in my opinion, despite his dual threat abilities fields and consistent passing and struggles in the red zone limit his fantasy upside with the pittsburgh offense historically leaning on defense and lacking stability post the ben roethlisberger era investing in fields is a risky proposition drafting him in 2024 feels like more of a hail mary pass despite his potential his uncertain backup role in pittsburgh's offense and the uncertainties is just a risky play especially he's being drafted as a starting quarterback at 80 P28. He's not going to start to start the year, so uh, I'm I'm out on Justin Fields. And then there's another quarterback here that I'm fading, and that is uh, Tua Tagovailoa. And uh, 
Since 2023, he was marked by inconsistent numbers, notably a decline in passing production, especially over the second half of last year. Despite a strong start, he did showcase elite upside in several games with over 20 fantasy points, but he remained inconsistent down the stretch. He he might have a bounce back year, but I'm not willing to bet on that. He's a risky R, uh, quarterback one option considering his ADP and value compared to some of these other quarterbacks drafting Tua in 2024 might be just not very a sound decision I'm going with other safer options bigs what are your thoughts on your number one option here at the quarterback landmine who's going to blow up in our uh in fantasy managers uh lineups this year in your opinion what are my thoughts um I'm not drafting him <laughs> those are my thoughts um no I'm just kidding uh my yeah. number one quarterback landmine is uh the quarterback of the san diego chargers of los angeles of irvine justin herbert um justin herbert is uh he's in a new offense this year and i'm not saying he's not a capable guy like he he's got some talent however um he's been nothing but hype since the day he came out of oregon and he's never lived up to that he he's had good fantasy seasons and not lived up to it in real life. He's had good real life seasons and not lived up to it in fantasy. And right now he's going as quarterback 15. So he's just outside of the top 12 in redraft. He's being drafted as a quarterback two, which I think fits. However, there are guys who are being drafted after him that I think are much better. If you're gonna draft a second quarterback in redraft that you that I, I would personally reach for. Uh, Jaden Daniels, he's got that rushing upside. Bryce Young, we've talked about him on the show before. He's got that rushing, rushing upside. Daniel Jones, don't forget, Daniel Jones has that rushing upside. And before he got hurt last year, in 2022, he had a fairly good year. Now he's got Malik Neighbors, who is a yak monster. And one thing that we know about quarterbacks paired with yak monster wide receivers is that all the quarterback has to do is get the ball in the hands of the wide receiver and they produce the numbers for the, the quarterback. Malik Neighbors can do that. Wandale Robinson is also there in New York, and I think New York is a sneaky stack play uh, in best ball, Scott Fishbowl. Um, maybe maybe do some, some deep diving into the New York Giants offense because if Daniel Jones has a good year this year, they could be really, really good. Russell Wilson. The aforementioned Justin uh, Justin Fields, I would absolutely draft him towards the back of the draft as a handcuff if I'm drafting Russ. I know you can take Russ in the ninth or 10th round, 11th round, something like that. But Russ is accurate. He's got George Pickens. He's got Pat Firemouth. He's got Jalen Warren all to catch passes. We saw what Arthur Smith did to Desmond Ritter, and hopefully Russ Wilson's veteran presence can overcome that. And then, and then finally... And this is something that's interesting. I've been kind of beating this drum for for a little bit, not necessarily on any shows, but there's a quarterback who I've talked about before, and he might have the Baker Mayfield bounce this year, where he's kind of bounced around. He's kind of scoffed at in fantasy circles. Nobody wants to take a chance on him. Well, it was revealed earlier today that this guy, who I was talking about with my commish in my dynasty league yesterday, just yesterday, I was talking about how this guy is a sleeper. Nobody sees him coming, but right now he it looks like he's going to get the starting job. And today that was confirmed by the head coach in an incredibly offensive offense led by offensive coordinator Kevin O'Connell. And I'm talking about Sam motherfucking Darnold in Minnesota. I would rather draft Jane Daniels, Bryce Young, Daniel Jones, Russ Wilson, and and uh, Sam Darnold before I drafted Justin Herbert, and that is my quarterback landmine. Yeah, I mean you you got it right there. I, I've I, I just don't like the situation that's going to be evolving there in the Chargers situation with Harbaugh coming in. You know, going to be a lot more run centric. They're going to be in probably some closer, tighter games. And uh, like you said, I'd be uh, willing to you know throw some. Uh, deep shots on some of these guys like a Sam Darnold who just came out of the woodwork there. So yeah, good call, Biggs. Um, now my number one landmine, and it's going to come to a surprise to some because he finished as the quarterback two 
two years in a row, and I'm still high on Jalen Hurts. I'm telling you all that right now, but when we're drafting him as the quarterback two or three coming in here, I see some red flags with some resurging and surging quarterbacks coming at his heels. So let's get into Jalen Hurts and his performance in 2003. 2023 landing him as the QB2. Initially, it seems promising, but deeper diving into that number, it raises significant concerns for the upcoming 2024 season. First, the departure of Shane Steichen last year was severely understated. Since his departure, there has been concerning decrease in his passing efficiency, evident in his drop in passing yardage per game, yards per attempt, completion percentage, and touchdown rate, resulting in a notable decline in passer rating the downward trends suggest potential challenges in generating fantasy points this year moreover hertz has heavily leaned on rushing touchdowns for fantasy production in 2023 with an alarming 21 percent of his fantasy points coming from rushing upside since a heavy reliance raises a red flag with the incumbent of saquon barkley further crowd clouds his upside bringing in an elite running back will surely wait, take wait, wait. away sorry what's up hello bringing in an elite to like running wait, back wait, wait. Ah, I see. Yeah, bringing in a, a like an elite running back will definitely hurt his value. Jason Kelsey relying uh, retiring <laughs> lays doubt on uh, uh, the effectiveness really of the good. tush push. Exactly. So Jalen Hurts rocked fantasy football in 2023 and 2022, but the road ahead looks dicey. Shane Steichen left. The passing game's gone down south. Drop in yardage, completion rate. We talked about that. Drafting Jalen Hurts in 2024 is like playing with fire with the passing game in decline. Heavy reliance on rushing touchdowns and the new addition of Barkley. It's time to tiptoe around this fantasy landmine and seek safer options at the position. I still think he finishes very high, but he is going to be a tough one to reach that QB2 overall uh, like he's being drafted as. So that's my landmine uh, for quarterbacks at the 2024 year. So, Schultz, what do you think about that? I'm going to bring you in here because I think uh, you might have a take on this Jalen Hurts situation. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm with you here on Jalen Hurts. And the big one for me is, like you said, he's being drafted as the second quarterback. Um, obviously, you know, mostly Allen is – the de facto one, but like I'm looking for Mahomes to come right back into this one, two spot this year with the mm. offensive improvements there. Um, another thing with Hertz, uh, you mentioned the Shane Steichen thing. And I think that was evident in the eye test last year, just watching Hertz. Um, he just didn't look as comfortable in the offense um, and looked confused at times. It just not as smooth. Um, and then you, you talk about, yes, he was the QB too, but you always have to ask how and why. And one of the reasons is the defense for the Eagles was pretty bad last year. Um, they drafted both those two studs. Uh, oh, crap of that. A uh, guy from Toledo. I can't remember his name. Quin Quinion Mitchell and then um, Cooper DeGene. So, like, they're reloading um, on defense. And then they've drafted a bunch of other young guys the last few years. So, like, the defense there should be improved, I think, to where uh, Hertz isn't going to be playing catch up as much. Um, and they're going to be you know, they're probably gonna be a really good team. still, so they'll, they'll be in control. Um, I think that was a big part of a lot of his points. And so, yeah, I think there's definitely some regression there. And for me, yeah, the biggest part is he's being drafted as QB two. And you guys both talked about it already. There's so many good options at quarterback this year. I feel like that, especially in redraft bigs talked about, he doesn't like to, you know, go hunting for the big guy. And this is exactly why, because you could be stepping on a landmine. And if you do that early, you're screwed instantly. Ba Boom. Boom. Good one, Chelsea. That stepped on a landmine. I was yeah. heat. Uh, you know, uh, there are lots of uh, angles in fantasy football. And Greiberg and I have a dynasty team in which we drafted Jalen Hurts in the first round as our first round quarterback, which fits. It falls into place. But that's we're talking dynasty startup. That's a little bit different. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen year over year in dynasty. So an asset now uh, who may have a down year can recover. In redraft, it's a little bit different. You kind of have to just like keep your focus on one singular season. And 
with the addition of Saquon Barkley, there might be kind of a, a – the, the Eagles' offense might want to kind of like lean away from letting Jalen Hurts carry the RPOs so much. But you got to stay tuned for our RB show, which is coming up in our in the, ne- the next couple episodes because, um, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk about Saquon. Um, thank you guys for watching the Fantasy Forecast yes. with Biggs and Grimberg, Grimberg and Biggs. And uh, if, uh, if you like the show, go ahead and like it, subscribe it, and uh, hit the bell. Share it around. Get the algorithm going. Um, shout out to our fans in Vietnam and India and Portugal. We love you guys. Um, go ahead and comment so we know who you are and, uh, and we can get out to you. We have Google Translate. I can, I can write, oh, to my Portuguese friends, I want to say obrigado. That means thank you. And, um, yeah, uh, find me on Twitter at BigBonedFFB. And uh, go ahead, Greg Bird. Yeah, find me at FFCanuck99 on the X machine, I call it. Uh, Biggs calls it Twitter. We uh, That's where we defer Forever. sometimes. We can't agree always on the same stuff. So uh, it, it, we, we do have some differences. So every, from everybody here on the Fantasy Football Advice Network, Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Forecast and uh, stay tuned to our next episode where we're going to go over some wide receiver landmines. Oh, I thought Thanks. it said lead mines. Ah, no, landmines. I hope you win. Hope we you hope, win. We, we, we hope you win.